Looking upward, I surveyed the ceiling of my prison. It was some 30 or 40 feet overhead and constructed much as the side walls. In one of its panels, a very singular figure riveted my whole attention. It was the painted figure of time as he is commonly represented, save that, in lieu of a scythe, he held what, at a casual glance, I supposed to be the picture, image of a huge pendulum, such as we see on antique clocks. There was something, however, in the appearance of this machine, which caused me to regard it more attentively, while I gazed directly upward at it, for its position was immediately over mine, I fancied that I saw it in motion. In an instant afterward, the fancy was confirmed. Its sweep was brief and, of course, slow. I watched it for some minutes, somewhat in fear, but more in wonder, wearied at length with observing its dull movement. I turned my eyes upon the other objects in the cell. A slight noise attracted my notice, and looking to the floor, I saw several enormous rats traversing it. They had issued from the well which it lay just within view to my right. Even then, while I gazed, they came up in troops, hurriedly, with ravenous eyes, allured by the scent of meat. From this, it required much effort and attention to scare them away. It might have been half an hour, perhaps even an hour, for I could take but imperfect note of time before I again cast my eyes upward. When I then saw confounded and amazed me, the sweep of the pendulum had increased in extent by nearly a yard. As a natural consequence, its velocity was also much greater. But what mainly disturbed me was the idea that it had perceptibly descended. I now observed with what horror it is needless to say that its nether extremity was formed of a crescent of glittering steel, about a foot in length from horn to horn. The horns upward and under the edge evidently as keen as that of a razor. Like a razor also, it seemed massy and heavy tapering from the edge into a solid and broad structure above. It was appended to a weighty rod of brass, and the whole hissed as it swung through the air. What boots it to tell of the long long hours of horror, more than mortal, during which I counted the rushing oscillations of the steel, inch by inch, line by line, with a descent only appreciable at intervals that seemed ages, down and still down it came. Days passed, it might have been that many days passed, Ear it swept so closely over me as to fan me with its acrid breath. The odor of the sharp steel forced itself into my nostrils. I prayed. I wearied heaven with my prayer for its more speedy descent. I grew frantically mad and struggled to force myself upward 
against the sweep of the fearful scimitar. And then I fell suddenly calm and lay smiling at the glittering death as a child at some rare bauble. The vibration of the pendulum was at right angles to my length. I saw the crescent was designed to cross the region of the heart. It would fray the surge of my robe. It would return and repeat its operations again and again. Notwithstanding its terrifically wide sweep, some 30 feet or more, and the hissing vigor of its descent, sufficient to sunder these very walls of iron. Still, the fraying of my robe would be all that for several minutes it would accomplish. And at this thought I paused. I dared not to go further than this reflection. I dwelt upon it with a pertinacity of attention, as if in so dwelling I could arrest here the descent of the steel. I forced myself to ponder upon the sound of the crescent as it should pass across the garment, upon the peculiar thrilling sensation which the friction of the cloth produces on the nerves. I pondered upon all this frivolity until my teeth were on edge. Down, steadily down it crept. I took a frenzied pleasure in contrasting its downward with its lateral velocity. To the right, to the left, far and wide, with the shriek of a damned spirit, to my heart, with the stealthy pace of the tiger. I alternately laughed and howled as the one or the other idea grew predominant. Down? Certainly, relentlessly down, it vibrated within three inches of my bosom. I struggled violently, furiously, to free my left arm. This was free only from the elbow to the hand. I could reach the ladder from the platter beside me to my mouth with the great effort, but no farther. Could I have broken the fastenings above the elbow, I would have seized and attempted to arrest the pendulum. I might as well have attempted to arrest an avalanche. Down, still unceasingly, still inevitably down. I gasped and struggled at each vibration. I shrunk convulsively at its every sweep. My eyes followed in outward and upward worlds with the eagerness of my most unmeaning despair. They closed themselves spasmodically at the descent, although death would have been a relief. Oh, how unspeakable! Still I quivered in every nerve to think how slight a sinking of the machinery would participate the keen, glistening axe upon my bosom. It was hope that prompted the nerve to quiver, to frame, to shrink. It was hope, the hope that triumphs on the rack. The whispers to the death condemned, even in the dungeons of the Inquisition. <laughs>